Hi, Hero Uh It's Jay and Mike here from the Metal Lab, uh, also known as the uh, Ottawa Regional Champion, and his cohort uh, for the day, also a very accomplished uh, Hero Clicks player. We're here to do our unboxing with 401 Games of the latest set that's coming out uh, this Wednesday, which is The Joker's Wild. Uh, this is a much anticipated set. There are some really crazy figures. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right down to it and we're going to battle. What we do is we pull, out a, we pull out a single figure each out of each booster and uh, we talk about why they're good and then we decide between us which one wins. We'll keep track of the winners and the overall winner at the end uh, gets a nice handshake. <laughs> anyway, are you ready? I'm ready. Alright, let's do this thing. Pull our first, first booster out. Right from here? Or right from here? Do whatever you want. Oh, I'm, here. Yeah. I'm opening right now. Sketch variant. Uh, okay, I am gonna pull that one out here. Does not have that FX space because the other one is not as good. Let's see here. So in my pack, I got El Diablo, uh, a sketch variant, Raza Ghoul, uh, Harley Quinn from the Uncommon Slot, Harvey Bullock, and Amanda Waller. I am gonna pull out the. Uncommon Raza Ghoul because El Diablo is really insignificant, and that was the rare from that pack. Um, my rare was the Deadshot in the set. Um, I have a generic or a sketch variant Court of Owls female initiate, so the mm -hmm. version of that one. Uh, the generic Court of Owls assassin, the uh, Adam, the Al Pratt of the JSA, and I have the um, not the Dick Grayson, the Jason Todd Robin. Ah, uh, Jason Todd Robin. Okay, so that's the one nine hundred. What is it? 100 liver dot. Yeah, that's his, uh, one of his special powers, or his traits. Okay, well, getting right into it, uh, I've pulled Razabool out because he is a heck of a lot better than the El Diablo, which was my rare from the pack. Uh, once again, sketch variant in this particular case. Uh, he is a, a rare 140 points in this set. There's only one character that's actually higher points in this set, and that's Geoforce. Uh, he has a trait that's Lazarus Pit during the, uh, during the place objects phase of setup. You may place a Lazarus Pit special marker as described in this card. In an unoccupied square, at least six squares from any starting area. He also has a special movement power, which is Razor Bull can use charge and flurry, and a special damage power, which is Razor Bull can use outwit. Uh, opposing characters within six squares can't use the Batman ally team ability. Batman ally team ability? Fairly common in the set. Uh, and with these new cards, you can see, you can actually see the dot. As a player, as an opposing player, you may not flip over the card, however. This is purely for the active or the actual owner of this character's uh, convenience. Uh, he does have 12 attack, he has Batman, uh, Batman enemy team ability, so he can lend that out to someone who has that same team ability and calculator. He is fantastic. What about you, uh, I have Deadshot, who is a rare, mm -hmm. uh, with an optional trait called Contract Killer. When building your force, a theme team may include Deadshot and still be a theme team if your force includes a character with a point value greater than 80. If your force doesn't have a character with a point value greater than 80, modify Deadshot's combat values by negative one. So he's a sort of, a, he's an assassin, so he has that cool trait where you can choose to let anybody basically hire him as an assassin. Uh, that's pretty decent. Uh, he's got nine range. Uh, and improved targeting ignores characters, so he's basically just a sniper uh, with the Batman enemy and Suicide Squad team abilities because he is in the Suicide Squad sub theme of the set. Mm -hmm. He's got pretty solid combat values as a ranged attacker, but I think he wins this one. I think I do. Yeah, he's kind of a monster within the set itself. Yeah. So yeah, that's one for me, zero for you so far. Let's put these back. Uh, and you can simply line them up and knock him over. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Just like that. Easy way to keep track. Booster two. Let's go. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I what? got the first prime, I think. Well, that's a, probably a win then. All right. Uh, I ended up pulling Looker as my rare, Merlin, Red Hood, a Thanagarian, which we will not speak of because they are terrible, uh, and the Joker. Which Joker's at the common? common. common. Yeah, common. Uh, I have Anarchy, who was the common prime. Uh, I also have a rare Doctor Fate, uh, another generic Court of Owls Assassin, uh, the Red Hood, who is uh, both the Joker version as well as the uh, Jason Todd, and I also have the Outsider uh, Technograph. Very nice. Well, 
I'm gonna say this right away, you are gonna win this round because my rare is Looker. She is pretty good, but uh, you did pull one of the better, uh, I think it's the second best prime in the set? Yes. Yeah, pretty easily. Why don't you talk about yours first? Uh, so Anarchy, again, is the common prime with the Gotham City keyword and the Batman Enemy 2 ability. Uh, he has a trait called I've rigged the place to blow, or have I? Uh, and it reads, at the beginning of the game, you may place up to six bomb special markers as described on the map, on this card, on the map, at least four squares away from any starting area and each other. Uh, then he also has a special power, which is, uh, is attack slot, give anarchy a power action, place adjacent a bomb special marker as described on this card. So he can make that same kind of bomb and uh, just litter the map with bombs and uh, players from way back when will probably remember the Gamma Bomb, which was a nuisance. Uh, <laughs> and based on the wording of his trade and the way his card is laid out, Wizkid's, uh, the rules form actually said that unlike most characters with these kind of effects, his bombs are actually independent of him. So just taking them out isn't enough to get rid of all the Yeah, bombs. his bombs will survive him and actually still be useful. Uh, I pulled Looker. Um, she is an outsider. There are many outsiders in this set, which is pretty awesome because the team ability is fantastic. 10 range on that 10 team ability. Uh, she has a special movement power, which is telepathic coordination. Uh, Looker can use mind control. When she does, the hit character modifies its attack value by plus one, even if it has been targeted by the Outsider's team ability. And as we know, Outsider's uh, eliminates your ability to modify uh, stats up or down. So in this case, uh, she gets around that. Uh, she is really good for 45 points, so if you do pull her, I would suggest playing her in sealed at the very least. This is yep. also Looker's debut in Hero Clicks. So right, she's unclicked. Quite a good debut. This point. So there we go. Uh, you win. Congratulations. Hey. That's 1-1. One, one. Let's move on. Oh, I think I win again. Sorry. I don't know. Oh. Did you? I think I might have asked I pulled Mr. Freeze. I don't know. I love Johnny Thunder. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not conceding just because I love the JSN. No, I know. It's, it's so good. It is really good. That is a really good piece. Uh, this is one of the most entertaining. We both pulled Super Rare in this particular case. Uh, I pulled Johnny Thunder, who is riding his genie. Quite literally. Uh, I also pulled the Thanagarian, uh, Colonel Rick Flag Jr., Harvey Bullock, and uh, Robin. I believe that is the Jason Todd version. That's the uncommon, so that's Jason. Yeah, that's Jason. Common is Dick Grayson. This right. Is not turning. That's okay. <laughs> I pulled, in addition to the Mr. Freeze with his uh, clicks effects and gorgeous sculpt. Oh, it's uh, amazing. I got Amanda Waller, uh, Rachel Ghoul, the Outsiders Batman. Uh, and Amanda Waller and Harvey Bullock. That Batman is great too. Yeah, so starting with mine, Johnny Thunder, once again super rare. Uh, he is an A, so there is a B, which is Jakeem Thunder. Hopefully we'll pull him in this unboxing. Uh, he has the All-Star Squadron, Justice Society, Mystical Past, and Soldier Keywords. Uh, he has a trait, which is my wish. My wish is, gee, how do I say it? At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled. On a 1, modify Johnny Thunder's combat values by minus 1. On a 2 to 5, Johnny Thunder can use a standard power of your choice, so pick a power. Uh, and on a 6, modify Johnny Thunder's combat values by plus 1, and Johnny Thunder can use a standard power of your choice. Any result lasts until your next turn. So it's not based on the actual click, it's based on the actual turn you're in. Uh, and then he has a special damage power which is the most powerful JSA member, if only he'd realize it. Johnny Fender can use Perplex and Probability Control, but, but both only to target opposing characters. His dial is somewhat schizophrenic. It gets really, really good in the middle. Uh, he can be played at 125 or 75 in this particular case. That special damage power is only on his top two clicks, so you do want to play him at 125 most of the time, especially in sealed. There you have it. Uh, so we have Mr. Freeze, and like the Iceman, he comes with a Plex FX uh, ice-based marker. Uh, uh, his trait is, try not to shatter my frozen friends, boys. When Mr. Freeze hits with a range attack, give it each hit character an action token. And after action resolve, attach the ice wall marker to one hit character, unless it is attached to another character. Mm -hmm. uh, and the effect on that is, as long as the ice wall marker is attached, that character can't be moved or placed, and modifies its event by by negative two. Mm -hmm. Ruin at the end of that character's turn, and deal that character one pin in between damage, or give any adjacent character a power action to remove the ice wall. Mm -hmm. So, once he hits with a range attack because he's more of a ranged character with a psychic blossom energy explosion. 
Uh, that character is frozen in place and can't really protect itself, so negative two defense. Mm -hmm. uh, he starts. He does not start off with uh, special defense power, but it is Mr. Freeze can use toughness at the beginning of your turn to heal Mr. Freeze a number of clicks equal to three minus the number of adjacent opposing characters. Hmm. So he's gonna be hard to deal with. Yeah, he's to really tough to deal with. I, I love pick powers because you know you have a lot of flexibility to them. Yeah. But I will concede this round to you. I do love that Mr. Freeze. I, I actually own one already for the pre-release. There we go. Okay. So to be honest, I was gonna propose a tie. <laughs> well, I honestly think it just edges it out slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Another rare pack for me. Sam. Oh my god. I well, really you're like gonna win this round, that's for sure. Um, I, you know what? I, my rare is Talon, but I'm gonna take, because you're gonna win anyway, I am going to take out Black Lightning. Sure. He is really cool for a common. What yeah, else did you get? I also got Batman, that awesome Batman, uh, Razagul, non sketch this time, Bronze Tiger as a sketch, and Talon, which is the rare, as I said before. Um, yeah. I got an interesting pack. I got a Commissioner Gordon. Uh, I got the Thanagarian. Mm -hmm. I got a Dick Grayson Robin. And then I also got uh, the Jason Todd as a sketch. So, wow. very you bad. That's three of them so far, I think? I think so. Yeah. They're so disposable, aren't they? He's pretty common for an uncommon. So I'll start off because I got Jay Garrick. Absolutely. Uh, very bare bone style. He's a with flash. 35 points for hypersonic speed and solid stats and JSA team ability and uh, one trait. Uh, a simpler time, which is a shared, another one of those shared traits similar to the superior foes in some of the Batman enemies in this set, uh, but the JSA equivalent, which is uh, once per turn for all characters with this trait, if a character uses the JSA team ability to replace its defense value with the flashes, that character can use super senses for the attack, but only evades on a six. Right. Uh, and he's packing an 18 for only 35 points, so he'll be able to help the rest of your JSA team uh, be very well defended. And that trait in particular is interesting because it carries over, like if you were to uh, borrow his uh, his defense and then borrow another JSA member's defense, you can actually choose to keep his trait, uh, trait bonus. Uh, and I pulled Black Lightning, which is another outsider, fantastic, outsiders and politician. Uh, he has a special attack power which is Mark Lightning. Black Lightning can use incapacitate with three bolts. When he does, after action's resolve, each hit target is dealt one penetrating damage. He's five clicks long for 75 points. He's run, He's got a running shot with eight range. Uh, that special power is on his first three clicks. Has some willpower and some enhancement. He's really, really good. He's really good. Yeah. For a common, he's fantastic. But you did win that round. This is quite a good sculpt, and only for a rare. Yeah, really good. I want him so bad. I sounded wrong. All right, uh, moving on. We have here. I got. Oh, okay. Sketch Plastic Man. But I didn't have him because I think it was a mistake. Oh, yeah? Cool. What'd you get? What's in the rest of your pack? Uh, the rest of my pack includes uh, the Manhunter Generic, Black Lightning, the uh, Green Arrow of the JSA, and the Seven Golds of the Victory, and a Cobra Fanatic. Mm. Interesting how, even though he's a sketch, uh, sketch variant, the Plastic Man's Fits of Ice Marker is a uh, normal color. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I'm going to win this round. Uh, I pulled Grace. I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. Uh, so Grace is my rare. I get all the clicks up from the tether, apparently. Uh, the, yes. Uh, so Grace is my rare, but I also pulled Harley Quinn, Wildcat, another JSA member, uh, Amanda Waller, and Calculator. Let's see here. Now, Grace in this set is a little bit rare because she's really, she's a brick. Um, she is 125 points, so fairly hot on the high end for the set itself. So in, in um, excuse me, in uh, sealed, she's fairly exceptional. I'd play her if I didn't pull her. Uh, not so sure outside of that, but we've got her trait, which is, oh, first of all, her keywords are Amazon and Outsiders. Her trait is, I'll take the big guy. After a move action, Grace is given a uh, given result. She, make, she may make a close attack targeting an adjacent higher point point opposing character. Very, very, very situational, but her dial itself is packed. She has a uh, charge, super strength, and invincible on her opening click with indomitable, uh, and the outsider's team ability. You can see that right there. So she is really, really tough. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Uh, Plastic Man is a character we haven't seen in quite a while. No. I don't think we've seen him since Justice League before this, uh, and we luckily got him because he has a convention exclusive ID card now. Right. Uh, so he has uh, one trait and one special power. Uh, trait is Tag Your It. Plastic Man can use Shape Change, but it succeeds on a 4 to 6. When Plastic Man hits a single opposing character, after actions resolve, attach the tag mark to that character, moving it from anywhere else. Right. The character with the tag marker that moves must roll for breakaway as if it was adjacent to Plastic Man, and if it was within range, can be targeted by Plastic Man with a close attack. Mm. When the character successfully breaks away, is hit with an attack, or Plastic Man fails a shape change roll, move the tag marker. So he can basically tie up an opposing character from range, and he picks up plasticity as well, so he can be tying them up from across the map, similar yeah. to the elongated man that we both love. Yes, we do love him. He's very, very good. Uh, and and the flash set, of course. Yeah, uh, damage special power is immeasurably powerful, absolutely nuts. When Plastic Man is given a non-free action, choose one. Sidestep, the tiny damage symbol, standard damage symbol, or giant damage symbol. Mm. Plastic Man can use the chosen power or has the chosen symbol until Plastic Man chooses again. So he can be a taxi as a giant or he can be more mobile with sidestep. Uh, he picks up some more Plastic Man-like powers like Perplex, our regen, and uh, plasticity on the dial, and has the Justice League detected keywords. Mm. Yeah. I think he Fair is a little of underwhelming. He, he's shenanigan but a little underwhelming, so I'm gonna have to concede. Very it. situational. I mean, they're both somewhat situational because her trade is situational, but she's good otherwise. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's more of a yeah. bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus if you're next to somebody who's higher points. And in sealed, it's just not very yeah. common. But yeah, I think that uh, this one's mine. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. There, like so. We're moving on, we're hitting up the second half of our bricks here. here. Okay, well, I'm not. You definitely fond. win no matter what. Yeah, but I'm not fond of him. Although he does win out in terms of power between the two. My actual rare from this pack was the uh, Sandman of the JSA, but I'm actually gonna choose. Like Wildcat instead. Yeah, he's really cool. He's actually really good. It's neat that you can actually use the JSA Sandman on the uh, ID card that we have, even though it's for Marvel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice because the requirements for the actual ID card call ins. Yeah. All right, so I pulled Geoforce. Um, Geoforce, we, we saw him last in Teen Titans, was it? Uh, no, the Batman set. Oh, the Batman set, I'm sorry. And he had that little token that you could take out the of Earth base. Or something. Yeah, it was a little bit before my time, but I did get to play around with him, uh, even though it was. Uh, I pulled him, but I also pulled Harley Quinn, Commissioner Gordon, Colonel Rick Flag Jr., and Tattooed Man. Uh, I also pulled uh, the same Harley Quinn, uh, the Hawkman, and Vicky Vale. Cool. All right, so there we go. He's up front. Let's put him on the mark. There you go. <clears throat> He's overcosted. That's my number one drawback here. He does win the match, but he is overcosted. It's 160 points. He is the highest point figure in the set itself, which is unusual. I've never seen a set where the 160 is the cap, uh, in my time anyway. Uh, he has a trait which is Lord of the Land. Geoforce can use barrier, but only as a free action and only to place one barrier marker. These markers are not remo removed at the beginning of his next turn after action is resolved. If the map has more than four such markers removed, one of them. Uh, he also has a special movement power, which is Lava Jet's Burst. Geoforce can use Charge, Force Blast, and Improved Movement ignores uh, blocking terrain and destroys it in the process. Uh, his dial is seven clicks long, and the reason why he's, he's actually really good in sealed is that he has uh, seven range with running shots, uh, psychic blast with 11 attack, and uh, 17 defense. Uh, with Impervious along with some leadership, which is very useful in this set because he has higher points than everybody. That is Geoforce. Looks pretty decent, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I choose Wildcat. He has uh, the same simpler time trait as the uh, Jay Garrick Flash, uh, mm -hmm. but his effect is that character can use probability control, but only to reroll one of the dice in the attack roll, which can still be quite effective because even if they roll a six and a two, making an eight, you can reroll the six. Mm -hmm. Um, and another trait, I'm this, sorry pal, I mastered that style before we were born. Adjacent opposing characters can't use close combat expert. 
Because he is old as hell, and he's been around. He's grizzled. He knows every fighting style. He's trained everybody. He knows martial arts in the DC universe. He is the toughest. You can't really surprise him, so he just shuts <laughs> down your close combat expert. He's super cool. I, I love the JSA figures in this set, as I was saying before. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, GeoForce also has the Yotes of his team ability, which makes him a little bit cooler. Um, all right, so I won that round. Moving on. Killer Croc. I pulled Killer Croc, Two Face, Our Man, Wildcat, and a Joker Thug sketch variant. Uh, it's funny because I actually pulled a Joker sketch variant of uh, the Squirting Flower one. It actually looks pretty interesting. I also got the Manhunter generic, uh, Dick Grayson Robin, Commissioner Gordon, and Cobra Initiates. Mm. I'm breaking the rule a little bit here by pulling out Two Face instead of Killer Croc. Killer Croc is the rare in the pack. But Two Face is exceptional. So, got that there. And in terms of seal for this set, he's fantastic. He's the only support in the set, actually. Uh, let's see here. So, this is Two Face coming in at 65 points. Um, why don't you get into yours first? Uh, so we have the Joker with uh, the Batman enemy version of the Simpler Times for your foes trait, which reads, Once per turn for all characters with this trait, if a character uses the Batman enemy team ability to replace its attack value with the Joker's, you may re-roll the attack roll. So probability control in all but name, so you can stack it with probability It is control. pretty good, yeah. In a sealed environment, that's pretty useful because... Very, very, He yeah. also comes with Perplex. Uh, he's only 50 points with Indom, which is... Interesting, considering how cheap that is. Uh, and he has a special attack power throughout the dial. Come on, Bats, it's the old squirting flower gag. Give the Joker a power action to make a close attack, targeting a single opposing character within three squares in line of fire. If the attack hits, deal that character one penetrating damage instead of normal damage. So three range for his close combat attacks, and he only has a two damage to start anyways. So it's not like he's losing out on much there. No, 50 points, not bad at all. Um, the This Two-Face is probably the best thematic representation of a Two-Face, I think, that they've come up with so far. Uh, in my humble opinion, of course. Uh, this Two-Face has Arkham Asylum and Gotham City Underworld as his keywords. Uh, he's 65 points. He has two traits and a special power. The traits are a change will do me good. Give Two-Face a free action and heal him one click and roll a d6. On a result of four through six, turn him to the same click number on a different color. Now what they're talking about when they're referring to the colors is actually the back of the card here, or on the actual dial itself. You have the red clicks and the blue clicks. It's pretty hard to see here probably on camera. But he starts here, and then if you roll a four through six, he switches over to his more aggressive dial itself. Uh, for 65 points, he's a real bargain. Um, then the other trait is Flip a two-headed coin, Two-Face can use probability control regardless of range and line of fire, but only for attack rolls and only if one of the dice is a two. Imagine that. Uh, he then have his uh, special attack power, which is on his second uh, dial there. So the blue numbers, are the blue clicks themselves, it's on the first two clicks of those. Uh, and that is Two-Face can use Energy Explosion with two bolts and hit characters modify their combat values by minus one until your next turn. Um, he is absolutely fantastic in my, in my opinion. The, the auto healing thing is great, keeps him alive uh, in the long run. I mean, he's five clicks, but he's actually ten clicks because he does flip back and forth uh, and is able to stay alive while supporting your, uh, your friendlies. He has five range, he also has the Batman uh, enemy team ability, so he's going to be able to take someone else's uh, attack value if, or give it out, depending on which dial he's on, because on uh, one of them, he only has nine, he has nine, eight, 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 seven, so incredibly low, but he, that's a defensive dial, he's got uh, perplex along with the only support in the set itself, which is those two clicks there, and then if he switches over, you can see he's a bit of a beast. So yeah, really, really good click, uh, and I did get to try him out. So here we are, uh, yeah, so I won that one, and let's bring them back. Even though he's a rare and this is an uncommon, he definitely wins, that's put him on his side. Damn it, I was trying to cheat you there, <laughs> didn't really work. Right. Oh, I totally win this one. Uh, yeah, did you? Oh yeah, you did. Oh my god. Go on. You did, we both got super rares. Oh, that's cool. We did, I got Clayface, you got the killing joke. Photography Joker, there's two Killing Joke Jokers in this set. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the better one. 
Uh, I pulled Clayface, which is a super rare. Turn it just first click there for you. Uh, I also pulled a Calculator with Colonel Rick Flag Jr., a Court of Owls Assassin, nice generic, uh, and uh, the Common Robin, which is Dick Grayson. Uh, in addition to the Camera Joker, I have uh, Merlin, Black Lightning, Green Arrow, the JSA one again, and uh, Court of Owls Initiative Mail this time. This is quite the sculpt here, and I'm oh, very awesome. pleased with this dial. So I'm going to start it off. Uh, yes, this is do. the Joker from the basically the opening of the Killing Joke, where he mm. bursts into breaks into the apartment. Uh, he has the Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Underworld, and Injustice League keywords, and the Batman Enemy Team ability. He is one of the higher point characters in this set at 140 points. Yeah. Uh, he has two traits and two special powers, so he's very packed. Uh, he has the first trait of it's the locking that will kill you. The Joker can use poison. When he does, damage dealt to characters with a lower point value is penetrating damage. So essentially, it's penetrating damage. Yeah, it's penetrating. Given how few characters are lower points than him. Um, then, that kind of reminds me of a lamp from back in the day when you would have a Joker. Right. The same, similar sculpt with the camera being lugged around by Mastermind Fodder. What does lamp stand for again? It's Lockjaw. It, lockjaw, armor piercing, Mastermind poison. Right, yeah. So you, he would have penetrating poison and outwit. You could kill him with the Mastermind Fodder. And he had still to protect all his stuff, and he would just be quite annoying. Wow. Very cool. Uh, the second trait is one I've been hoping to get on Joker for quite a while, which is other characters can't use Persistent Strike when attacking the Joker. His dial is packed with uh, Mastermind and Super Senses, so that sort of immunity, like we saw in the Super Spider-Man from the Spider-Man set, is something to help protect him from uh, the prevalent Persistent Strike. Mm -hmm. uh, to start off with, he has a special damage power, which he uh, alternates between on the dial, which is... Uh, the Joker can use ranged combat expert and improved targeting ignores characters. When the Joker hits with an attack, hit characters are each given up to two action tokens. Mm. So he's hitting you and he's pushing you, so you are not retaliating. You have to put, you have to clear your next turn and possibly take push damage. Uh, he has a special defense power on his last click, which is you'll have to kill me. Stop. The Joker can use mastermind. Mm, so that's as we that know, special stop the, right the there. stop uh, terminology True. means that. Uh, that you can't uh, counter or ignore this power, and along with that, he ignores precision strike. So there's almost nobody to get around that mastermind. Right. And he kind of gets full beast mode on that click with 12 attack and four damage with the range. He's insane. Expert. He's so. absolutely amazing. Totally meta worthy. Um, now this is a loss. It's still a pretty good piece. Clayface is great tie up. Um, his his uh, keyword is Gotham City Underworld. Um, he has a trait which is, he actually has two traits. One of them is, uh, this is how I deal with the bat. Once per turn for all characters with this trait, uh, yada yada yada, that is the Batman enemy team ability. His special thing is that, uh, uh, let's see here, enemy team ability replaces attack value with play faces. If there's a close attack after action's resolve, you may place the mud marker in a square occupied by the hit character, removing it from anywhere else. Uh, and then he has smother you when Clayface hits an opposing character with a close attack. After action is resolved, you may place the mud marker in a square occupied by the hit character, removing it from anywhere else. Characters occupying a square with a mud marker are dealt one, one damage at the end of their turn. Uh, when actions resolve and no character occupies the, the same square as the mud marker, remove it from the map. Now that combined, that you figure you could get out of fairly easily, but he has a full dial's worth of plasticity. And he's seven clicks long for 75 points. Uh, and he, as you can see, he is really, really tough because he starts with Invincible, goes to Impervious, and then ends off with four clicks of toughness. So he always has something to mitigate. Um, and starts with 18 defense, which at 75 points is actually ex exceptional. However, yours is insane. So you win. Literally and figuratively insane. Totes. All right. Yes, he died. So we're sitting at four to four with only two losers left. So that's it. Ooh. Oh, I think I might have won. Oh no. I think I know what you got. What do you think? I think you got two green arrows in that pack. <laughs> no. Not quite. I don't know. Well, I did get a chase. I got the Bizarro Joker in this particular oh, okay. case. He's actually very good. Um, I got Grace. I also got <laughs> uh, Cobra, uh, Hawkman, Colonel Rick Flag Jr., and the uh, Hand Buzzer Joker. That's definitely a win for you, and we've already gone over what Grace That does. is a win for me, yes. We have already gone over Grace, so I'm just going to briefly go over Bizarro, um, Joker, 
Oh, and I did pull Adam, Batman, Green Arrow, and Cordovell's Initiate, the female one. There's a female and a male. And they have identical dials. So, the Bizarro Joker here. So, the, the theme for the Chase is in the set uh, is Bizarro himself. There is no Bizarro, though, unfortunately. But uh, we have Bizarro Joker, uh, Bizarro Green Arrow, etc., etc. Bizarro Batman, which should have been Batzaro, but you know, you can't, win them all. can't win them all. Anyway, in this particular case, we have uh, Bizarro Joker, and that his trait is me, the saddest man in Bizarro world. Uh, Bizarro Joker can use plasticity, adjacent characters modify their, uh, yeah, adjacent characters, period, modify their attack values by minus one. Uh, his special attack power, which is Bizarro Poison, at the beginning of your turn, give Bizarro Joker a free action and heal him one damage for each adjacent opposing character. And then he has a, on his last two clicks, as they all have, all of the Bizarro uh, chases in this particular case, they have a special defense power, which is an imperfect body. Stop! Bizarro Joker can use toughness. Now, as you can see here on his dial, he's exceptional tie-up. Uh, and it's just a great piece to have overall. Probably, what do you think, second best of the, the chases? Uh, I guess I would have to agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know All if right. he's meta worthy, but still. Still really good. Yeah. All right. I one, but only enough. lost one, but only enough. There we go. Last but not least, let's see if I, I think we're. Uh... Okay, I got something oh. pretty good. I got something pretty good. I got. Something pretty nice as well. Let's, let's start with you. Yeah. I got, I'm not sure between uh, Shiva and Bronze Tiger. I'm gonna go with Shiva. Shiva. For sure. What do you got? Oh, I just happened to get the penguin. Oh. <laughs> the super oh. penguin. Yeah, that's totally a win for you. Yeah, Broken Hawkman, oh. Black Lightning, uh, the Joker Thug, and uh, the Common Joker. Uh, I got Bronze Tiger, like I said, who's also an exceptional martial artist, a uh, tattooed man. Uh, Black Lightning and Sketch Wildcat. Oh, cool. Well, Lady Chief is really good. So I guess I'll just start with her just to let you go on about the pain a little longer. Sure. Um, Lady Shiva is a Batman enemy that starts with a 12 attack for 50 points. That all alone is almost reason enough to play her. Oh, she's an auto <laughs> play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, she has the, this is how I deal with the bat keyword, or tr shared traits, and her version gives plus one attack if it's a close attack. Uh, there was a misprint on the card, and she actually has a three clicks of precision strike to start, which is a bit redundant, but I guess also extra protection to mm -hmm. go along with her special movement power, which is the first one was just to knock you off balance. Lady Shiva can use flurry and precision strike. When she uses flurry, if the second attack is against the same target, she may you may keep the result of one of the dice from the first attack, and if you do, the second attack roll can't be re-rolled. So if you roll hot. You want to just try again with that 12 attack, you're going to have some good odds instead of rolling badly. Uh, and then your special defense power is I'm the ultimate test, and she has that through her whole dial, which is um, uh, Lady Shiva can use combat reflexes. Adjacent opposing characters can't have their combat values increase when making close attacks. Well, she is exceptional. Kicking a penguin. Kicking a penguin. <laughs> so I pulled the super rare penguin. Uh, he is Devil Dinosaur Jr. in a way. Uh, he is a pog factory, essentially, as, as we know from uh, the Spider-Man set and, and from the meta at large. Devil Dinosaur is exceptional. He spawns three pogs at a time. Uh, they follow very much a, a very similar, um, I guess, model to these pogs as well. You'll see there. Well, I'll just give you a new trait here. So the penguin uh, has three traits, or two traits and a special damage power. Uh, the traits are, this is how I deal with bat, once again, very, very familiar, because he is a Batman enemy. Uh, let's see here, if they borrow his attack value. Uh, after actions resolve, you may give Robo, a Robo Penguin a move action as a free action. Second trait is my own deadly rookery. Give the Penguin a power action to place adjacent to Robo Penguin by standard of your choice, as described on this card. Uh, give the Penguin a power action to give each Robo Penguin a move action as a free attack. Now, What's interesting about that wording as well is you can see here just three different versions of the Robo Penguins. There's a close combat, a ranged combat, and then a pulse waver. Uh, in, co in comparison with Devil Dinosaur, Devil Dinosaur can only bring them out once each, and this guy can bring them out as many times as he really wants to. Uh, he also has a special damage power, which is my best weapon to date. The Penguin begins the game with a Robo Penguin attached when placing a Robo Penguin bystander 
on the map, you may remove the Robo Penguin from Penguin's base and use it to represent the bystander. This bystander modifies its combat values by plus one, and when it's KO'd, reattach the Robo Penguin to the Penguin's base itself. His dial, I mean, he's 40 points, it's really good. He has uh, a full dial's worth of stealth, along with uh, some 18 defend and uh, the special power all the way through his dial itself. So, what do you think? I think you win that one and you win the whole thing overall. I think I did. But I'll get you next time. Thing. You will get me next time. <laughs> well, that's it for us uh, today. I did end up winning the Battle of the Unboxing here. Uh, if you'd like to see more of me and Jay, you can watch us on the Metal Lab every Monday at 9.30 p.m., except on Mondays where we're gonna be doing our set review, which was this past Monday, uh, in which case we started at 8.30. It is a rather long show for those uh, unboxings, but well worth it because we go through each individual piece and give our thumbs up, thumbs down analysis and, and vamp a little bit on the actual pieces a little bit more than we are here. Uh, come on down to 401 Games. These pieces will be available for purchase, uh, I believe, uh, day of the release uh, or the day after, depending on when they get to it. Uh, and uh, keep on playing, keep on clicking. And uh, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, just to clarify that the Metal Lab is 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Yes, Eastern Standard Time. Also, you can check out uh, Jay's writing on HG Realms. He's a regular contributor. He has the rules. What is it? Every rules Tuesday recap or Wednesday? Every other Tuesday. Every other Tuesday. Rules re recap. Uh, and you can check out his writing regularly on MajesticCCG.com uh, slash Apex dash Insiders. Uh, hope to see you at a tournament real soon. Thanks.